What's going on guys, we're back with Building With Mods to finish off the Starlight Drive-In Marketplace. I'm not going to go into as much detail in this video as I have done with the other videos simply because I'll be repeating a lot of the same kind of techniques and ideas. So I'm just going to quickly run through the different things I've built and then in the next part which will be the final part for Starlight Drive-In I'm going to have a walk around and have a look at all the different things we built and obviously the changes I've made off camera that I said I was going to make but I kind of just made some little tweaks and little changes here and there. So let's get down to building. So I walled off half the settlement using the big tall junk fences and the smaller ones and I used the junk fence gate as well to kind of bring it all together. Speaking about bringing it all together, I used sandbags and tyres just to break up the wall a little bit and make it kind of look more realistic and like it was actually built and just thrown together in the apocalypse rather than just a line of just junk fences. There was little gaps on the side of the gate so I just used the half fences just to fill them in before adding a load more tyres behind the one side of the fence. The gateway looked a bit boring so I used some road guardrails, some sandbags again and some tyres just to bring it up and just add a little bit more character and more detail. Before adding some barriers and some shotgun turrets that I like to place in the ground I find they look more better just to bring it all together. The ground around the settlement looked kind of boring, clean, it just didn't really go with the whole look and feel of the settlement. So I placed down some roof boards and even a shack bridge that I sunk into the ground just to kind of clutter up the place and just make it more like an apocalyptic place rather than a clean and, well it's not really clean, the ground is quite bumpy but it's, it's quite smooth. And it just kind of adds more detail, more life to the place. And I think it worked out pretty good. Following that, I built this small little room by the entrance. I'm not going to bore you with what I did to build this because it's quite straightforward. And I use a lot of the similar techniques I've used in the other videos. So it's basically just a one by one room. And this room is going to be where visitors first go to when they enter the settlement to hand over all their weapons. I use fences and an arrow sign to get new visitors going in the right direction. I use these little cupboard doors again for the window and I use support beams and one of them wooden kind of gap things I used in the past to just hide all the gaps and make it look like it's meant to be there rather than just floating or hovering. I placed shelves on either side so people can put their weapons on while handing them over. For the inside I just made sure I had flooring I did a bit of clutter and storage and filled in any unwanted gaps. I also changed out that shelf outside because it was just too clean and too nice for this settlement. A big tip I could give you when building settlements, make sure you have the theme or idea and just stick with it. If it's going to be a grutty and kind of run down, like I used a lot of wood and a lot of fences on this because for this settlement that's the supplies this settlement is going to have, so that's what they're going to be using. Next I moved on to the little pond area in the middle, so to break this up I just used a large and a medium water purifier, just placed them relatively close together so they kind of looked like one big unit and that was it, simple as that. Next I wanted a kind of cheap kind of market area, so I built it kind of behind in the corner so to build this I used the floor and roof pre-built buildings and I just offset them so I could add roofs on top of them and it kind of just looks nice with how it's only like kind of three blocks wide but with the support beams it kind of breaks up and makes it kind of look cool. As these were the cheaper stores I didn't want to go really fancy with them so I just added a range of different vendors along it and I broke it up a little bit by adding a table and an ice kind of container thing and just added fences to kind of block all them gaps in front. To stop people wandering behind the counters I added chain link fence all around the back making sure I had a gate for each one. If you watch my other videos you probably have guessed by now I really like building with vehicles. So for the next build we're going to be using a bus again but this time we're going to be building a restaurant inside of it and this is going to be in the kind of lower 
class, I guess. Well, it's not really. But this is going to be the cheaper restaurant. Obviously, the other restaurant we first built, it's kind of big, fancy. This is just going to be the kind of more budget-friendly place. So I just placed tables and chairs inside of it, added a jukebox, did some fancy work to the outside, chucked down obviously a vendor because that's going to be the only place, there's no kitchen inside so this is where you're going to buy your drinks and buy your food and then go inside. Thinking about it, I should have probably added a barbecue outside to cook the food but oh well, I can probably quickly do that before in the next video. But yeah, and that's the kind of fancy little budget restaurant I guess. And for the last kind of little shop, I really wanted to use one of these pickup trucks, mainly because the back is quite big and you can place stuff on it. So I ended up making a kind of general store over in the other corner because it was just a bit of space there. So I just added a pickup truck, put some tires on the side to kind of break up, make it just look and sit right. I did some tents over the top as well to kind of keep it a little bit more shady, but also just to break the area up. And then I just placed loads of crap in the back of it and a little store on the front. And to finish it off, I added a patio table with loads of crap on it, a till, and I placed a trade in store and rug so a vendor could actually be here. And it's a completely workable shop. And that basically does it for this settlement. And you might be thinking, what about on the other side of the settlement? I could build it, and the main problem being is. When you build so much crap and you take away the size limit, it can cause a lot of crashes. I've been quite fortunate so far, but I know if I keep pushing it and keep building here, it's going to probably end up crashing and corrupting and just messing up and it's just going to cause a lot of problems. But not just that, it's just nice to go somewhere else and just start building another themed place. Rather than just keep kind of building the same thing, kind of get, just gets boring. And anyway, on the other side of the fence would just simply be where the kind of security and the police and the kind of people who look out after this place and make sure the place runs smoothly. It's just going to be basically just a couple of little buildings where they sleep and stay and whatnot. So I thought I might as well just move on to the next settlement. Speaking of the next settlement, that is going to be Red Rocket. And we're going to be building something quite cool. And I can tell you yet, I'll tell you in the next video, which will be out shortly anyway, which is going to be about looking around this place and just kind of having a walk around, seeing what we built and just see how it looks now when it's all together. So thanks for watching, guys. If you liked the video, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And goodbye.